welcome to Joey Foe with me, Joey. And today we're going to talk about the Guild in a bit more detail. So I've been doing predominantly the Arcanists. I've touched a little bit on the Guild with the Lucius crew. But I've been doing Rasputina as my main crew. Um, and I've done a little bit of the Dark Debt stuff. And I've painted up some Lucius miniatures. But I didn't really do too much on the Guild as a whole. So I'm going to do a, a series and a playlist eventually of videos just on each faction pros and cons and I'll read out what you guys have said are your favourite things about each faction, maybe things that could be improved upon. But today is the guild so I'll give you a little bit of fluff, a little bit of who is part of the guild and then what you guys think about it. So in the world of Malifaux there has been no greater discovery than that of the soul stones being a precious and rare commodity and very useful. The guild was established by some magicians and conjurers to basically keep the peace to it to an extent and to make sure that the breach was never closed again. So today the guild is a very much self-governing body, very far away from the first ideas of the wizards that created it. Its first duty is, for the most part, keeping the peace and law enforcement for maximum soulstone production, but it has separate branches of the guild that are that were made to combat the unique dangers that Malifaux present. And what I'm talking about there is the Neverborn. The guild and the Neverborn not get on so well. The guild cares so much about killing off all of the Neverborn that pretty much anyone who volunteers their services to want to kill them is pretty much given the job straight away. It's a pretty high casualty rate and you know it's safe to say that not a lot of people get the job done except the Ortega family which do kill quite a lot of Neverborn. So the guild being the good law enforcers that they are try to police any and all of the weird magical issues that Malifaux has to offer. One of the natives of which being necromancy, uh, being able to reanimate certain bodies to commit crimes and it being very hard to find who the perpetrator is because you can pretty much be the puppeteer using some dead bodies to do your dirty deeds. So it's a difficult crime to police. It's a raider, looking at you. Creepy, zombified witch. And the death marshals are pretty much in charge of that job to kill the dead people. So we've got Neverborn Hunters, Death Marshals, and next we've got Witch Hunters. As you would imagine, Witch Hunters hunt witches, mostly being the Arcanists, who are a bit temperamental with their powers. They are a bit of a danger to themselves and others around them because the wily magic that they're using is a bit untested and dangerous. It's not the standard magic that has been taught in schools, if you like. It's a bit crazy, Rasputina. It's a bit crazy. So, you know, the guild have quite a few enemies. So far, never born arcanists and everyone else. So there we are, that's the guild. Bit of a fascist organization, not so liked by their inhabitants by their constituents of sorts. Um, you know, the leaders enjoy the riches, but the people are mining away for the soul stones and don't really see or reap the benefits of it. So the guild are noble, but also selfish and greedy. So they've got their good and bad sides, but they are pretty much the rulers just not in a good way. So now it's time for the crews that exist within the guild. So we've got Sonia Creed is number one. And she is a witch hunter of sorts. She is the eradicator of the arcanists. So, of course, the guild aren't the number one fans of the magic users 
i.e. the Arcanists, but Sonya has her own arcane abilities, and though she is a very loyal member, it's not necessarily to the guild. She, she is first and foremost a magical user, and she's mastering her own arcane abilities, so her association with the guild is more for the accessibility to the soul stones rather than the defense of the people or any honorable loyalty at all. She's a bit of a selfish cow, um, but she is pretty cool. As a model herself, she's got uh, a sword and a gun and some magic. Awesome. What more can you say to that, really? She's kind of cool, so she's got a bit of range on her. Um, I would suspect, I've not played her yet, but I would suspect her to be a little bit similar to Rasputina in that her range is all right and she can shoot as well, whereas Rasputina has to hide. I think that Sonya can be a little bit more out in the open, but she's not going to be one that can be attacked a lot and withstand it. Um, but, you know, she is cool. She's got her offensive magic as well. So, you know, she's a pretty, a pretty cool master to go with. With this crew and with Sonya, pretty much going for witch hunters, her being a witch hunter, witch hunters, meh. Makes sense, right? Lucius. Lucius, I covered a little bit, uh, a little bit of fluff. Uh, I painted the crew. Here is the crew. I was proud of that. I think it looks awesome. Um, uh, and he's pretty cool, pretty cool character. He's got a guild guard captain, some guild guard and the lawyer with him. And he's pretty decent. Him as a model, I think is really cool. Um, kind of difficult sometimes because the mask is so delicate. Sometimes the facial features in the eyes get a little bit lost. Um, if you've painted this model, maybe you can shed some light in the comments about Lucius as a painting character. And his little staff, staff, annoying and bendy because it's so thin. Just is. I love him, but it was really irritating to get it straight. It looked a bit crooked in the end. Lucius being can run his own crew, but he's also a henchman, so he can be hired by another master uh, if you want to use him. And he's kind of a bit more of a defense booster and negates offensive abilities. So he's kind of good, in my opinion, for a bit of an introductory crew, just because it allows you to, I guess, uh, show you how to boost a bit more and, and get you used to some of the more basic things in Malifaux. He's not too complicated uh, and it's also a fun crew to kind of paint and build as well without too much hassle. But Lucius is a cool character, like I said, um, having talked about him a little bit before in some previous videos, I've been recommended him as a bit more of an introductory character. Next up is Lady J, and she's also a very cool looking model. Um, she is blind, fun fact, uh, but it's said that a lot of people don't know her name and all the reason why she's blind, but it is said that she's now got supernatural senses because of her blindness. I don't think that's how it actually works, but cool addition to the fluff. She's been a bit of a, a fan favourite on the Facebook page when I asked you guys what your favourite things about the Guild are today. And um, she seems pretty cool. There's Because of the blindness, there's a, uh, a no line of sight thing for her shooting. And that's awesome, isn't it? Lady Justice is usually put together with the Death Marshals. She is a killer of the Resurrectionists and bloody good job of it too. Being a killer of the Resurrectionist, she works best against undead miniatures. Where she's not doing that, she's kind of good in close combat. Next we've got uh, the Hoffman crew. So I just had a read through of some of the um, like fluff on, on Hoffman and I think it's worth reading word for word what is said here because it's really bleak. Um, so, leading the guild's newest special division, C. Hoffman, has turned his hatred of construct humans grafting into a campaign of revenge against the arcanist he believes turned his brother into the very thing he's been tasked with hunting down. Um, the next one is, although he reluctantly, it, he reluctantly followed Ryle through 
the bridge in pursuit of half-promised treatment for his polio. Hoffman found their roles reversed when the breach's psychosis grabbed hold of Ryle and ra ravaged Hoffman's older brother's body. Only through the quick interve intervention of Dr. Victor Ramos did Ryle survive, but more machine than man. Blaming himself and the Arcanist for his brother's condition, Hoffman turned to the Guild, who saw in Hoffman an opportunity to infiltrate the Arcanist op operations. They promised Hoffman the resources he needs to help his brother, using the newfound uh, psychic talents to command and control constructs to fight against the Arcanist movement. Hoffman is no fool, however, and is perfectly happy to use the Guild's resources and be used by them as long as they can help his brother. Really sad. Isn't that a bit depressing that he's assigned himself with the guilds because they're trying to help his creepy brother. I, I read that through because I've been reading or like brushing up on my guild knowledge, but ah, oh, I want to buy him just because I feel bad. Hoffman works well with amongst uh, other constructs and can borrow abilities and blow them up and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but this is where model-wise and miniature-wise, the real steampunk aspect of them really comes into play. You get a very steampunk feel with just the guild alone, on the Victorian, on the, you know, really robotic. And Ryle, who I painted and had some experience with, is a real pain to do because he is kind of rotting and const like half machine and, and just a bit freaky looking. Um, but when I did a video on the Charity Hoffman crew that uh, the Tale of Three Painters did, they did a fantastic job, uh, here being the picture. And it, it, was, it was really, really good. I mean, the pinstripe pants on him alone were enough to kind of make me gasp a little bit with admiration. But it is a really awesome looking crew. If you are a bit more of the fan of the machine than you are of the lady costume as Padita and Lady J seem to be, and Sonia, of course, not forgetting Sonia. Uh, you know, th I'd say the Hoffman crew is a very manly, a manly crew to pick, but also very interesting to paint because it is a bit more armor based and, you know, metally. So it is, it is a really interesting crew and an interesting looking one at that. Last but not least is the very lovely Padita Ortega. Um, and she is pretty much a killer of the Neverborn and a little bit of a Malifaux celebrity of sorts because of her tales and her beauty being quite renowned amongst the people of Malifaux. She's got quite a name for herself. Perdita isn't really a fan of the spotlight itself. She kind of keeps to herself. Um, but because of her ability to bend bullets, see round corners and in the dark and it, it seems like she can predict the future, basically, and she doesn't really like to show it off so much, but she is good at kicking some monster butts. So, you know, she's she's a really cool-looking character, she's a cool-sounding character, and uh, I like her. I think she's kind of humble in her celebrity status. And, um, the model, kind of awesome. So reading a bit on the overview of Padita having never played her before, she's got quick draw and faster than you, and she can cycle cards and activate other people. And it all seems quite complicated for someone that is maybe new to Malifaux. So she might be a more secondary crew rather than your initial one to learn the basics of the game. She seems to be one that can be mastered if you know how to play the game well. But um, she is an amazing model and, and the crew looks really cool. And She's a pretty lady. So there we go, that's the guild. That's video number one. It's probably a long one, my sincerest apologies. But I hope if, you're, if you've been interested in the guild, you can get kind of a general overview of what they are, who they are, character-wise, and whether you like them. So yes, let me know in the comments down below what you think about the guild, what you think about other factions, and which faction that I should cover next. Like if you like this, subscribe if you want to. And I will see you next Malifaux Monday. Who will it be? Bye.